Hey guys, Chris from Yachting Recycler. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're in the workshop and we're going to tackle this amazing retro 1960s Jungen's Starburst clock. They're a classic item. This one's got the teak spikes. It's German made. And we picked this up at a clearing auction a while back, earlier this year, I think. And I'll put the link up now. I think I paid $10 for it. It was the bargain of the day. I was wrapped to get it. It's in good cosmetic condition, but it does have some corrosion in the battery terminal. And I fixed a one of these Starburst clocks before, although that was a Japanese one, which had some corrosion. And I think in that video, which I'll link up the top, I think we replaced the actual battery uh, terminal, the piece of metal that the battery rested on. In this case, I think it might be strong enough to reuse, but we're going to clean the corrosion up. And I think I'll try some nickel plating and see if we can fix it that way. These clocks have become highly sought after in recent years, and I have seen them bring up to $1,000 on eBay. Uh, and I think I mentioned at the time that I reckoned it was a $700 clock. I could probably put a bit more on it if it, uh, if it works well. The important thing with this one is that it is the original German movement. Uh, it's a battery movement, but it's not actually a normal quartz, like a modern cheap quartz movement. The battery... Uh, runs a mechanical oscillator rather than a quartz oscillator and I think generally they still I don't think I've ever had one with a problem other than I oh, one did have a stripped gear once but generally most of the problems with clocks and even the quartz movement ones uh, you, people put cheap batteries in them and they corrode and they rust away the terminals but I'm pleased this has the original movement in it and if we can get it fixed up properly I think it's going to be worthy of a seven to eight hundred dollar price tag on it in the shop magnificent piece okay i will pull the entire movement out shortly because it's going to be easier to operate on but that's the badly corroded terminal which is the negative of the battery and it's quite often the negative that's corrodes the other end looks pretty good um, but wherever battery acid gets it's going to corrode and it, you can see it's even corroded along that track where it actually goes into the movement case so we're going to have to dismantle the case uh, but it's strong enough. I pushed on it. It still has some spring. So I don't think it's corroded bad enough to warrant replacing if we can get it cleaned up. If we can clean it right back to the bare metal and then get some nickel plating on it, which will protect it from further corrosion, it should look the goods and it should last for a long time. Okay, we'll start by taking the hands off because you can't get the movement out of these clocks or out of most clocks until you take the hands off. And that even applies to mechanical ones. Now, I think the door will be strong enough to rest back there. Now, the second hand, they don't all have a second hand, but this one does, which is great. It's actually got a bit of a twist in it. We'll have to straighten that up a bit. It should just pull out. They usually just plug in. Yep, just with my fingers. Don't want to get pliers on it if I don't have to, because it's going to scratch things. Certainly got a bit of a curl there, but we should be able to straighten that okay. Now, there's a little knurled nut here that screws on to hold the hands. I'm not sure they're not normally too tight if we hold the minute hand it should undo okay no good with my fingers there we'll try it with a little bit of fabric and some needle nose pliers should be able to grip the nut and not scratch the hands there we go that feels like we've got it Yep, it's loose. So a little bit of care goes a long way. Obviously the face of the clock is what everyone looks at. And we want to leave it as pristine as possible. So the minute hand goes on just with a couple of flat sides. And the hour hand normally just pushes onto a sleeve. And that should pull straight up with a bit of a wobble. There we go. Again, I don't want to get a screwdriver under there and lever it up. Sorry, it might be a bit shadowy where I've got the light. So you can see that's perfectly round. It just pushes on. And then we have the, the retaining screw, which has a slot on each side. Usually a decent wide blade screwdriver or a nice flat blade screwdriver will undo these. They're generally not tight. And generally they have a piece of rubber or something insulating or cushioning between the clock movement and the back of the actual clock housing. 
No, that's the wrong size. I have to get a bigger size. Okay, we've got a very large flat blade screwdriver here. I think if we get enough, as long as it sits in the slot, we should be able to get enough leverage to turn the nut. There we go, that's fine. No slippage means no marks. And that should be all that is retaining the movement. So we should be able to lift the housing away. And there we go. Okay, I've just turned another light on to get rid of some shadows. So there's our movement. It's the original Yeoman's movement. And a lot of these are pretty similar. And I've got another clock to repair one of these in. I think I might have mentioned it's got a, a plastic gear that's stripped. So I reckon they would probably give, bring pretty good money on their own because there's always people that like to replace the original movements. You often see a lot of Starburst clocks on eBay with cheap Chinese movements in because these ones have been thrown away because they didn't work. And, uh, and people like myself like to have them original. Okay, now this top cover has no screw retainers. That screw in there is the adjustment for the uh, speed of the clock. So it looks like it's just a plastic clip either side and it doesn't really clip through anywhere so it may just lever up with a little bit of gentle persuasion. So let's try that. Uh, yep, that side's come up. So it's really just a push. There we go. Just a push in. So there's no damage to that, which is great. And we can see here, where's my pointer gone? We can see here quite clearly that the corrosion has tracked along this bit of piece of metal only until the metal goes into the plastic housing and then it's quite clean. So that's good. So hopefully that's strong enough to be able to clean up and plate. Now, I'm not sure how it attaches onto the back here. In fact, I think it's just pressed. I think it just presses into the plastic housing and it's just basically forced to... Yep, it's not riveted or anything. So that whole metal, metal piece, that electrode, should just basically pop out. It's a bit firm and I think because where it's rusted, uh, metal, when it rusts, actually swells in size. So it's made it a lot tighter fit. Uh, normally it would probably slide out pretty easily, but now that it's swelled up it's going to be a bit tight but it will just slide up there once we can get some proper leverage on it and we don't want to break the plastic casing there we go it's starting to edge up there beautiful and there we have the offending piece all right we'll have to give that a big clean up now I'm thinking I'll try and clean it in with electrolysis. So I'll have to make up a little electrolysis cleaning tank. Uh, I used to clean things, and I've got a video on cleaning metal with electrolysis on my channel. I'll put a link at the top now. But that was in a large um, wheelie bin tank, a decent sized tank because I used to clean up all sorts of tools. This being such a small piece, we might have to set up a little cleaning tank in a jar. Before we go any further though, we will apply some voltage and just make sure that this movement works. I have set my bench power supply just to 1.5 volts. Uh, the white lead in this case is negative. I've run out of black leads and the red lead here is positive. And with a flick of the oscillator that's running beautifully. Nice healthy tick. That's great. So the rest of the movement is in perfect working order. Uh, all we need to do is fix the terminal and we should have a nice running clock. Beautiful. How's that? Just having a closer look at the terminal here. You can see that it's quite rusted. We can tell from that rust that this is a steel a nickel plated steel terminal. Some of them are brass or some are even copper. 
in which case you'll get a greenish corrosion or a verdigris uh, but we can tell here that this is definitely a steel one so we should be able to clean that up quite well in the electrolysis and it looks like the metal is still thick enough to hold its integrity and work yep there's no sign of any breakage there so once we clean it up we'll try nickel plating and that should come up really good okay it's the next evening guys i've just set up a electrolysis tank i, I may have mentioned i had a permanent large bin at the shop but of course that's all been packed up so i've had to mock up a little tank here uh, I couldn't find my car battery charger, which is what I normally use, and, and I did find one, but it wasn't working, so it looks like there's another project. So I've grabbed my bench power supply, I've turned it to around about 12 volts, it's normally what I like to run the electrolysis at. I've just got a little tub here with normal tap water, and about a spoonful of uh, washing soda, which is, uh, what is it, sodium carbonate if I remember correctly, yes, sodium carbonate. Uh, for the sacrificial electrode, I've just got a, an old rusty um, scraper and broke the handle off. So you need to use steel for that. I've seen people use stainless steel and it's uh, not a good idea because you can get some dangerous chromium in the solution. Uh, if you want to look at how to do electrolysis properly, I'll put a link up the top now. I did a video on it ages ago, but I think it still explains it well. So we've got the positive lead to the... Um, the rusty metal the negative lead to the part we want cleaned uh, it's submerged it doesn't matter if this clip gets submerged but you need to keep that clip out of the solution or that will rust away so let's turn it on we should get some bubbling there we go we have power and I'm not sure if you can see that but straight away we've got a nice stream of bubbles coming off you should be able to see that nicely so I'm going to leave that probably for a few hours and see how it looks I may even do overnight. I don't think it's going to hurt the base metal. Uh, I have used electrolysis on items and left it go for uh, days and it hasn't really seemed to to pitted the metal or anything too much. So we'll check it later tonight, but basically that should clean all the rust off that piece and then we can perhaps give it a buff up and uh, perhaps a dip in acid, just a final clean and then we can start nickel plating. A couple of things I didn't mention, I'm doing this on our deck out the back because you need to have a well ventilated area and the amount of bubbles coming off this little item is very very low but we are producing hydrogen and oxygen and you do not want to do produce that in an enclosed shed. It can, if you get enough it can certainly become an explosive quantity and as for a power supply it's just over 12 volts and it looks like we're just under half an amp. So. It's drawing a bit of current. It seems to be doing the job nicely. We'll check it a bit later on. 24 hours later. I've let this go for 24 hours. I don't see a problem in leaving it go for so long. I don't think it's going to pit the metal. You can see it's been bubbling away nicely. And most of the rust and discoloration of the water has been from the rusting of the, the uh, scraper there. The sacrificial uh, anode, I think that one is. So... The cathode being the negative, and let's have a look at that. It's gone black, which is typical when you do electrolysis cleaning. It should have got all the loose rust and scale off. So what we're going to do now is take it out of here, and we will put it on a little wire buffer wheel and just clean it up, remove all the loose debris, and see what it looks like. Okay, Coco has been pinching my gloves from my shed, and I can only find a left one lying out in the lawn, but that's fine because my right hand's not much good to me at the moment, other than small finger jobs. So... We've only got a little wire wheel in a drill here. Let's give this a bit of a clean up. Okay, it's cleaned up as well as I can. It was very tricky to get the wire wheel into all these different angles. You can see that part of the terminal there has actually corroded through, so the rust has done some damage, but I think there's enough strength there for it to still work fine. And I think I've got it clean enough to uh, get some good nickel plating on it. It's very difficult on the back, of course, but there's nothing loose there now. And we're going to give it a bit of a wipe down with isopropyl alcohol to remove any fingerprint oils. And then we're going to dip it in some 50-50 uh, hydrochloric acid and water. And then a final rinse in distilled water. And we can put it into our nickel acetate solution and see if we can do some plating. Okay, we now have nickel plating happening. 
and you will see there's some bubbles coming off the terminal which is suspended from some nice clean copper wire. I've been through the cleaning process and we have a very low voltage so that the plate happens slowly and you'll see that we've only got just under 3 volts and it's drawing oh, 0.2 of an amp. Uh, the voltage for plating is more important to be lower and less aggressive so that your bubbles forming on the on the um, the piece to be plated don't interrupt the plating process. I also will move it around a bit and I'm going to leave it for about an hour because uh, I want to get a fairly good plate on it. It's not going to be pretty because of the... You know, let's focus in there. It's not going to be pretty because of the pitted, pitted nature of the terminal. Uh, but I'm not after a pretty finish. I just want a good con connection. Uh, you can see it bubbling away there. And the other piece is a nickel strip. Now, if you want to know how to do this, I have done a video on uh, DIY nickel plating with much more detail and exactly how to do it. Uh, I haven't actually used it a lot, but it was an ideal repair in this situation. So I'll show you how it looks when it finishes. Uh, we're not going to we're not going to fix the holes that were corroded or anything like that. It's just going to coat everything hopefully with a nice nickel plating, which will give a good connection and prevent further corrosion, hopefully. Okay, I've let this plate for almost two hours, which is longer than what I've normally done when just doing a light coat, but I thought a good thick coat of nickel plating will be best. And I've moved it around in various positions, and I think we've got a pretty good coat. Now, it's gonna look a bit frosted because the surface wasn't polished. Hang on, we'll see if we can get some focus on this. Uh, but it looks like that's the underside. It looks like it's going to be a pretty good coat Okay, we'll see if we can get a focus on this you can see that was the worst part and even though it looks quite pitted Which it is and that's because of the rust. It's actually plated it quite well with nickel uh, The thing with nickel plating is the finish really 100% depends on your preparation and you can see underneath where I couldn't get it very clean It hasn't plated very well at all and it's certainly pretty rough, but I'm pretty happy with that. I think that will uh, certainly work well. There's enough metal left there for that spring to work against the battery. It should uh, be strong enough and we should get a beautiful connection now and the nickel should protect it for future. So I'm going to go back and put this in the clock and we'll see if it runs. Okay, this should slide back into this housing uh, and the spring part here should make it quite firm you can see there that it looks pretty good actually certainly a lot better than what it did look like if we push that home I don't think I'll push right on the tab in case it does bend it we'll try and push this spring part down I might have to get a screwdriver for that uh, better still maybe some large pliers and we should be able to push that down into position hopefully without bending anything there we go. Nearly home. In fact, I think that is. It's flush with the top. Almost flush with the top. Our negative connector there is pushing hard onto the circuit board. So we should have good connection. Yeah, okay. Let's put a battery in. Okay, I think this battery is okay. These are the... Uh, what were they? These are the C size, yeah. So they're not your normal double A's and they're not as big as the D size. Most of the Jungian movements take these batteries. There we go. Some good spring tension on the end of the battery. Give it a flick. Fantastic. So I'm pretty happy with that repair. It, As I said, it looks a little bit frosted. And had I needed to get a better finish on it, I think I might have used uh, maybe a little wire wheel on my Dremel to get in there and clean it up and smooth it off a bit better. But we can't do much about the pitting because the, the original corrosion has done the pitting. Uh, the good thing is that it didn't corrode far enough to break that tab off. It's still strong enough to hold the battery. Uh, one successful clock repair. We just need to put the movement back in the case. And there we have it, guys, all repaired. Uh, the installation of the movement was pretty much just the reversal of the dismantle you saw at the start. I didn't do the uh, little nut up with the pliers and the cloth. I just did it finger tight. That should be fine. Managed to straighten the second hand. 
Uh, and that's the exact time now. It's about you know, just after about, what, 24 minutes to 8. The second hand sticking around beautifully. It's got a nice little um, sort of a mechanical hum tick to it. Really nice movements, these. I love them. I gave the face a little bit of a clean up with some methylated, methylated spirits, only just the glass. I didn't want to touch anything else. And there we have a fantastic retro 60s Jungen clock with the original original movement and working beautifully. I'll just check the time calibration tomorrow. There is a provision for adjustment, so that will be perfectly fine. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. These sort of repairs are fairly common because batteries rust all the time in clocks. They're forgotten about. Batteries go flat. You never get around to changing it. Often people put cheap batteries in these clocks. So really happy with this repair. The nickel plating worked well. The electrolysis worked well. There are separate videos for those on my channel. I can now take my $10 purchase and hang it up in the shop tomorrow. And I think I'm going to put about $800 or $850 on it. I don't want it to sell straight away. Um, a, a retro fanatic will pay for that. And it's great to have the original movement. And I know the rest of it's all in pretty good order. So there, I'm really chuffed with that. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.